Good morning, everyone. And welcome to worship on this 20th Sunday in the season of Pentecost, October 15th, and also World Food Sunday. Uh, World Food Day is actually tomorrow, but it was established by the United Nations on October 16th, 1945. And World Food Day events are organized in over 150 countries around, across the world, making it one of the most observed days of the UN calendar. Uh, these events help promote worldwide awareness and action for those who suffer from hunger and help strengthen the link between agriculture and food security. Our worship today is based around the Canadian Food Grains Bank resource prepared for this year, which is, relies on our gospel text that all are invited to the banquet. Canadian Food Grains Bank is a partnership of 15 Canadian churches and church-based agencies, which includes Presbyterian World Service and Development, working together to end global hunger. You will also see in the bulletin there's information on the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty, which follows World Food Day on October 17th. We know that poverty and food insecurity is found in our own community, across Canada, and around the world. Both individually and collectively, we can raise awareness of the impacts of poverty and hunger. You are reminded that you're most welcome to join us for coffee and fellowship in the church hall after worship this afternoon. And if you are able to help with coffee hour, please sign up on the sign-up sheet in the church hall. You can just bring goodies, or you can help out, or you can help make coffee and set up, or whatever. Anyway, whatever you can do, because if we don't have volunteers, we won't have coffee hour. <laughs> so we have happy birthday wishes today to Becky Huck, whose birthday is on October 15th, and happy anniversary to Lloyd and Linda Osman, whose wedding anniversary is on October 17th. So. Our first PA Day camp of the school year is coming up on October 27th. We will have a busy and fun day of crafts, games, stories, and outdoor play. Our mission project is in support of the Brockville and Area Food Bank, so I'd encourage you to please see the bulletin for more information and ways you can help. And thank you to everyone who is supporting our Saturday lunch and Sunday supper ministries. Yesterday, we joined with First Baptist Church in St. Paul's Anglican in hosting the Saturday lunch at the Brockville Library. We distributed over 70 sandwiches, plus fruit, bottled water, juice, and snacks to people of all ages. Our next Saturday lunch is on October 21st, and our Sunday supper is on October 22nd, and you're most welcome to support these efforts, either with volunteer time or your financial donations if you do want to make a donation through your offering envelope, just please mark it Saturday, lunch, Sunday, supper. Okay. Uh, the photo board in the church down the hall needs to be updated. <laughs> so on the first three Sundays in November, the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th, Kate LeBrun, put your hand up, Kate, there you go, Kate, has volunteered to take portrait photos during coffee hour. So if you would like to have a new photo taken, or if you don't have a photo and you'd like one to be put up, please uh, contact Cade on any of those days and he'll be happy to take your picture. Now there are many other items of interest in the bulletin. I could go on for the whole service, but I know you don't want to hear that because you can read them. And you can read them carefully and please take note of those that are of interest to you. Our church website and our social media accounts also have the best inf latest information on what's happening here at First Presbyterian Church. So on this World Food Sunday, let us now come to God in prayer and thanksgiving, beginning with our call to worship, which is in your order of service. Let us read it responsibly. In the darkest valley, at the banquet table, in the hard work of life, at the moments of ease, in our day-to-day -day reality, at times set aside, like this time now, for worship, for listening, for paying attention. With every step we take, goodness and mercy follow us, and our cups overflow. Our first hymn is number 477. It's in the order of service and also in our blue hymn book. Your hand, O God, has guided. And you're invited to stand in body or in spirit for the singing of this hymn.
now I invite you to join with me in the prayers we approach God, which is in the order of service, and we will read it responsibly. Let us pray. God of all time and space, you have called people to meet you over the centuries, in many places, in many ways. We praise you for welcoming us, receiving us as we are. You hear our prayers and claim us as your own. In this time of worship, send your spirit upon us to revive our faith and guide our footsteps and extend your loving invitation to your heavenly banquet by the way of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Please be seated. And now we will continue our responsive prayers with the prayer of confession, which is also in the order of service. Let us read it responsibly. God of grace, you invite us to a banquet, and we do not even respond. You set a place at the table, but we find excuses not to come. You lovingly prepare for our arrival, yet we ignore your efforts. Forgive us, God. God of creation, you give us a world capable of abundance, but we act as if it is a world of scarcity. You give us the resources and the intelligence to provide for all, yet we lack the will and the vision to feed all your children. Forgive us, God. God of love, you call us to be the body of Christ in the world, but we hoard the blessings of communion for ourselves. Instead of loving our neighbors, we are consumed by the love of self. Instead of loving you, we bow before idols of our own making. Forgive us, God. God of mercy, help us to respond in faith. Forgive our failures and help us to learn from them. Change our hearts and minds as we hear your good news proclaimed. Help us to taste and see the goodness you have prepared for us and for the world. Amen. The same God who delivered Israel from her slavery is the God who delivers us from our slavery to sin. God has made a way to freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. The same God who gave Israel a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night is the God who sent the Spirit to lead us, to guide us. Let us follow with joy, knowing our sins are forgiven. Amen. And now I'd like to invite the children to come forward for the children's message and prayer. Oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you guys. How are you? Good, good, good. Can I slide this in between the two of you so that way everybody can see it? Oh, I like your braids, though. Those are nice. Yeah. So good morning. Not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. Just a second. I have to ask you a question, first of all. So how are you today? Good. And have you ever had an invitation to a party? Yes. Yep. Okay, you want to open the box? See what's in there? You guys say two of them, but they're both the same. Just, yeah, no, not that, this one. So you can hold one, yeah, so everybody can see it. What is that? What is it? What's that? Invitation. That's right. It says you're invited. Can you guys see that one? It says you're invited? Okay. And at the bottom, it says RSVP. It means um, message of how your friends or party participants are thinking of you. That's right, yeah. The fr and RSVP is actually a French for répondez si, si vous plaît. So respond if you please. Okay, please respond. So it means that when you have these invitations and you see that RSVP on there, that means they want you to respond so they know if you're going to come to the party, okay, or to the event. Now, some people receive invitations like these, but they don't want to go. So they make up excuses, okay? So they could be excuses like, I have a bad cold and I feel crummy. Or, I think we're going to go visit my grandmother that day. Or, we're having a test at school and I have to study. Yeah, all right, right. <laughs> We, I have to go to soccer practice or basketball practice. Or mom says I have to babysit my little sister. So those are all excuses, right? And making excuses is not new. Even back in Bible times, 
people made excuses. And Jesus told a story about a king who threw a party. It was a party for his son who was getting married. But none of the people he invited showed up for the party. They all had excuses. And in Jesus' story, because this was, he was, this was a king and it was his only son, you can imagine it would have been quite an honor to be invited, right, to this party for the king and his son. So the food had all been prepared, and there was lots of food, and the invitations had all been sent, the table was set, the tables were set, everything was ready. But on the day of the, of the banquet and the party, nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. They all had excuses for why they didn't show up. So the king sent his servants to ask where the people were and why they hadn't come. Well, the people all began to make excuses about how busy they were and we just couldn't come and da-da-da-da-da. So the king was really upset. So he told the servants to go in the streets and invite everybody they saw. Didn't matter who they were. Invite everybody to come to the wedding banquet. Okay? So they did exactly what the king told them and soon this wedding hall was filled with all these guests, all different kinds of people. So can you guess who the king was in this story? Jesus. It was, it was God, but who was the son? That was, that's right, that's Jesus. Jesus sends us invitations. The invitations don't look like this, but they're in the Bible, okay? So when you read the Bible, you see all kinds of invitations from Jesus. Jesus has invited us to come to him and to be part of his great banquet in the world, but some people still make excuses. So we all, I think, should accept Jesus' invitation, right? Stop making excuses. What do you think? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for his invitation to accept the gift of life he offers. Yes, Lord, yes. We accept the invitation. Amen. Okay, you guys ready to go down? I think you can at teaching Sunday school today. You guys can go down. Oh, that's probably left over from another time. Anyway, we'll see you guys during coffee hour. Okay. Maybe this will help stepping on everything. next hymn is also in your order of service and in the hymn book, The Lord's My Shepherd. So let us sing it together.
please be seated. And now let us come to God in prayer this morning for insight and understanding. Inspiring God by your spirit, open our minds and hearts to receive your word for today, whether it challenges us or comforts us, so that we may live more faithfully as we follow Jesus Christ, your living word. Amen. I'll invite Andrew Cameron to come forward. He's going to be reading the psalm and our scripture lesson for today. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 23, and we'll be reading it in unison from the bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our scripture reading is from the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 1 to 14. Jesus spoke to them again in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a king who prepares a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his servants to those who had been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent more servants and said, Tell those who have been invited that I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and fatted cattle have been butchered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. The rest seized his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his army to destroy those murderers and burn their city. Then he said to his servants, The wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find. So the servants went out into the streets and gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing wedding clothes. He asked, how did you get in here without wedding clothes, friend? The man was speechless. Then the king told the attendants, tie him hand and foot and throw him outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are invited, but few are chosen. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God within us, and for the word of God around us, Thanks be to God.
Loving God, may the message that you have to bring to those who are gathered here today, may they come through me, or if need be, in spite of me, for Jesus' sake. Amen. You may be wondering why we're hearing this text on this Canadian Food Grains Bank World Food Sunday from the Gospel of Matthew. I mean, it's, it was in the lectionary, so it was one of the ones that was appointed for today, but really, how can anyone spin any good news out of this parable of mistreating and killing servants and casting a man out because he didn't have a wedding robe? Sometimes you really wonder why Jesus even told this story to his listeners. Well, I would, I guess if I had to venture, and I mean, this is a parable that preachers like me have wrestled with for years and years and years and years. If I had to venture why Jesus told it, it was because it was so outrageous, so shocking, that it begs to be taken seriously, but not literally. It should be reviewed as teaching a truth, not a fact. And this is a parable of judgment. But it may not be the judgment we think it is. Because we tend to get nervous when God starts making judgments. It leaves us wondering, well, are we worthy or not? Or are we going to be judged harshly too? But too often our fears about God's judgments arise because we assume that God judges us in the same way that we judge other people. Often our judgments of others are judgments of exclusion. But what if it's just the opposite with God? What if Jesus is trying to shock us into saying that the kingdom of heaven is not? business as usual according to the world's standards? What if God's judgment on our lives is one of acceptance, of grace, of invitation, a judgment of inclusion? So if that's true, then in our story today, what distinguishes the first invited guest from the second? Because one wasn't really more deserving than the others. They were all invited. They were all favored. None of them had done anything to deserve an invitation to the king's banquet. It was just given. So if it's true for them, then it's true for all humanity. There is enough food at God's banquet for all, so everyone is invited. The king didn't really like one group more than the other. We don't really know who he invited the first time around. We assume they were friends or people that he knew. But his sole motivation was to share his banquet and celebrate his son's wedding. So he wanted someone, anyone, everyone, to eat at the banquet that he had prepared to be part of his kingdom and part of his life. But we know, and on this World Food Sunday, Canadian Food Grains Bank reminds us that right now, people who live in poverty in a, or who live in a conflict zone or who are elderly or people with disabilities are at a greater risk of hunger. Too often, they are not invited to the banquet. Now, it's not that some of the guests were good, or bad. Because to the contrary, with the second round of invitations, the king sends his servants into the main streets and the street corners with the instructions to invite anyone who you find. And they did. They gathered all the people they could find, the bad as well as the good. So if that's true for them, then it's true for us and for all humanity. But too often we hear that, can, that women, who are often tasked to grow the food for their families and for their communities, are disproportionately impacted by illnesses such as COVID-19, violence, and climate change. 
They're not good or bad. But they are too often left out when it comes to receiving food aid and development aid from countries like Canada. They aren't invited to the banquet. There is only one thing that distinguishes the first invited guest from the second invited guest. Presence. The second invited guest showed up. The first invited guest did not. The wedding hall was filled with the second invited guest because the first invited guest refused to come. So this is the only difference between these two groups. And it's the key to our life in God to show up, to be present. However, that is a lot easier said than done. To be present for God, well, it's difficult work. It means establishing other people as the priority. It means seeing them for who they are and not what we want them to be or what we think they should be. It means letting go of our own agendas, our own distractions, our own fears, and yes, our own prejudices. And it means bringing and offering all that we are and all that we have. So if we're not doing that with others whom we can see, we're probably not doing it with God whom we cannot see. We're too busy. We're too tired. We're too distracted. We make light of other people's lives thinking, well, I have enough to worry about in my life. I can't solve all the world's problems. We have better things to do and better places to be. And that's what the first invited group did. What they did not realize, and what sometimes we do not realize, is that there is no life outside of God's banquet. No life outside of God's realm for others and for ourselves. So to show up and be present to God is to be worthy in God's eyes. It's that simple and that difficult. We don't earn or prove our worthiness as a prerequisite for entering the banquet because really, in God's eyes, none of us really are worthy. But we show up, we're present, and we discover for ourselves the worthiness that God has always known about us as well as the worth and value of others. But I'm not done yet because I'm sure you have a question about that guy who showed up without the wedding robe. Like, what was that all about? Obviously, it was more than just a dress code violation because he got kicked out. But something else was missing, something he didn't do. Our text tells us today the man was speechless. It was as if he was there but not really there. Jesus is reminding us that there are times, even when we show up, we're not really present to God. And you might be sitting out there now thinking, oh, this is going on and on again. Maybe I'll just close my eyes and have a little rest. But let us ask ourselves, what if this man had said something, anything to the king? What if he'd just made his presence known? What if he'd said, I was hungry, so I trusted you to feed me at the banquet. I was thirsty, and I knew there would be clean water for me to drink, so I trusted you to give it to me. I was empty. I was lonely. I saw abundance and welcome, and I trusted you to fill me. I was dying. I saw the door was open came in and I trusted you to give me life. What if he had just said something to the king? Anything. 
I think it would have been enough because he would have been present. Then the king would have said to him, I'm so glad you're here. You are worthy to be at my banquet. On this World Food Sunday, as we reflect on the food challenges that are faced by so many both here in Canada and around the world, we are called to be present, to say and to do something to know that we are invited to God's banquet and to do what we can to ensure that others know that they are welcome too. It may be something simple as going to the Canadian Food Grains Bank website, which is, is, I'll just tell you, is www.foodgrainsbank.ca to see what we can do to speak for those who have not been invited to the banquet by our world. Presbyterian World Service and Development is currently uh, has an appeal for the victims of the Afghan earthquakes. And by, by the way, there was another earthquake in the same area just yesterday. So people are starving. People don't have access to food, to clean water. But we can support that, their efforts through the work of Presbyterian World Service and Development. Because values of compassion and generosity are needed for a global community where poverty and hunger are not acceptable. But our values alone don't create change. So if our decision makers don't hear from us, they will assume we don't care about global hunger. But when we come together and speak up, our voices make a difference. When we are present to God, We can offer what we have and who we are today and every day to ensure that everyone knows that they are worthy and they're all invited to the banquet. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, your word forms a strong foundation on which to build our lives. Find us faithful, O God, that we may be present to you. Take what we have learned and grow to know you. For you are the one to whom we belong, the one to whom we pray, the one who has invited us to the banquet. Amen. Our next hymn is number 648 in the bulletin and in the hymn book. I'm going to live so God can use me. be seated. And now let us come to the God who invites us and welcomes us and asks us to be present. 
as we come to God in prayer. Prayer for ourselves, prayer for each other, and prayers for our world. God, we come into your presence with praise and thanksgiving for your faithful love. Your love never fails, not even when we turn away from you, when we ignore your invitation, when we or desert you for gods of our own making. Even then, you do not abandon us, but reach out again and again, inviting us back into relationship once more. As you welcome us, so you welcome our prayers, and we bring them to you with confidence on this morning, knowing that you will hear and answer. We pray for the world you created and the people who share it with us. For those caught up in war or violent conflict, especially praying for a lasting peace in Israel-Palestine, in Syria, in Afghanistan, and in Ukraine. For farmers who are struggling to adapt to a changing climate. For the millions in our world who are starving. And for the millions who wait in despair for greater action on our part to feed the hungry. For those who harden their hearts against the poor. And for all who work to eliminate world hunger. For all our neighbors in our community and on the other side of the globe, those who are both known and unknown to us, let us pray for a moment in silence for them. We especially pray for PWSMD programs that support sustainable agriculture and fill gaps in access to food, <clears throat> and which help people build sustainable livelihoods so they can meet their needs and build bright futures for themselves and their families. Pour out your spirit on your people and unite us as one human family, your beloved children. Fix our hearts and minds on what is true and honorable and right, as we search for better ways to serve your people and work together to end hunger. Keep us faithful to the call we have received in Christ Jesus our Lord, who continues to invite us all to your heavenly banquet, and who taught us as his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Creator God, we give you thanks for the abundance of your creation and for the generosity of your gifts. May your spirit inspire us and, and lead us as we seek change so that hunger and poverty are no longer a scar and a scandal in our world. As we prepare to bring our gifts today, inspire our generosity so that everyone has enough food to flourish and a place at the table to which we all are invited. You'll see in the bulletin and online there are a number of ways you can give to uh, support the work and ministry here at First Presbyterian Church. We thank you for all you can do and all you do do, both with your financial gifts and with your time and talents. And now let us sing together our offering praise song, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow.
let us pray. Giver of life and love, we thank you that in the heavenly banquet of your world, you invigorate and renew us. So may we boldly use these gifts to continue your work in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 652, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord, I Go. And just a reminder for those who are here in person at the church today that you are invited to join us for coffee and fellowship in the church hall. Go through the doors on either side of the choir loft, down the stairs or the elevator, and you won't miss the smell of the coffee or the noise. So let us come to God now as, we go, as I pronounce the benediction. Because as you have been loved, love. As you have been welcomed, welcome. As you have been fed, feed. And as you have received, give. And may the boundless love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the postlude.